we're here to discuss a, a topic that's very close to my heart, whether fintech actually is a global epidemic or not. I think there is a, a huge amount of evidence that actually relates to it being such. The amount of investment that we're seeing coming to market, the amount of changes that are happening, uh, really the level of interest that's coming both from an industry perspective and broader than this, where we're seeing massive media taking a real interest in actually what's happening in fintech and banking. So um, I, I think this is going to be the, the thread of the conversation that we will have with you guys today. Um, if we get into the, the first question then, uh, and, I, and I think it's a, quite a sort of a pertinent one to, to what I've just been saying is, Jason, we've had recently come to market an EY study that was looking at um, who it is within the, the global specter that is actually the, the top of the fintech rankings. Um, now, clearly in that EY study, the UK came out top. Um, do, do you think we're sort of observing of this, uh, this accolade in terms of being the best in the globe? I think it's a really interesting question because, uh, and one that, uh, I just never think about. You know, I think it's it's one thing to uh, to comment on and to look at the global perspective, but I think when you're in it, when you're working it, when you're actually you know driving businesses, where you are in a league table or where the city is in a league table of uh, of you know financial centres probably doesn't come up in a, an awful lot. I think there is something quite amazing about the mixture of talent, uh, experience, resources. Uh, brought into a small place, whether it's you know the Medici family of Italy or Silicon Valley in the US, uh, that does cause some some amazing things to happen. Um, and I think London has that special place at the moment, uh, where it ranks compared to New York or Singapore. You know, I don't know. Sure. What's your views? Uh, well, I take the point. Does it matter? I suppose, like you say, it was UKTI behind this, and they are trying to actively trumpet the UK. And if you look at the investment that's gone into fintech startups, both from uh, and fintech generally from large incumbent players as well as venture capital, it's significantly grown in the past sort of five years. So you could argue it's been effective, or you could argue that fintech was a tsunami that was coming anyway, and we just happened to be a part of that. I think it's probably a mixture of the two. It has played a role that we've actually been actively marketing London as a place in the centre for fintech. And I think there are some companies that are surviving and thriving because of that investment. Mm -hmm. Things like Level 39 and things like the Barclays Accelerator and, and other programmes like that you know, really do start in London for a reason because I think it does have that brand halo now around the world. It has been effective, um, but then you, know, you do look at Silicon Valley and you'd see more funding really going into to fintech startups there. Um, you may see more going into New York. It really depends what measure you choose to use. Um, and I think if the measure is, you know, where's the perception of the right place to be if you want to be in fintech, London definitely has that mantle. Yeah. And do you, uh, you know, it was a bit sort of, I, I didn't ask this question at the time and I was sort of lucky enough to be in Downing Street when they actually uh, unveiled the UI study and Harriet Baldwin was obviously very sort of proud to be sort of uh, at the forefront of everything that was going on. But do you, do you think actually um, the opportunity in the UK is actually because of the, the, the absence of the, the banks actually fulfilling on the potential? So, you know, fintech as, a, as an entity can only exist if there is an unmet need. So do you think actually fintech in the UK is because of the, the flip of the, the charts, as it were, in terms of the UK to the, at the top to, to, I think it was Hong Kong at the bottom, um, actually it would be that the, the banks in Hong Kong might be doing a, a better job than the banks in the UK to actually fulfil on what the opportunity would be? What's, what's your views on that, Jason? Well, I guess building on the, the first question, you know, we're at a, a very special place and time, especially for starting new banks. Uh, you know, I'd argue there is no place better in the world to, you know, London around this time is the place to do this. Um, just because of the, you know, the big four or five incumbent banks have 85% of the, uh, the current accounts in the, you know, in the, uh, the country. So there's massive market concentration on some products, which has led the regulators, the government, you know, industry to, to push towards bringing more competition in. Combine that with the fact we've got a very uh, mature uh, financial infrastructure. You know, we have faster payments, we have some just great underlying infrastructure uh, and combine that with you know the whole um, uh, sort of smartphone penetration in the market with you know the digitalization of people's lives it, it's a perfect storm of, of trends that has led to now being the uh, the right place in the right time sure. um, sorry uh, churn in banking is historically very very low and it's actually very very hard to change banks but I think the fact that there's more choice for the customer can only be a good thing mm -hmm. and it challenges incumbents to up their game and, and I think that's a, a really wonderful thing that we should be challenged you know and, and I'm all for that mm -hmm. uh, if you're creating better customer experiences